Hello and welcome. This is Vanessa Graulich, and today we're going to do the math behind the 10K for Tesla, February 2021. So first of all, what is a 10K? Oh, I forgot. Let's do some math. <laughs> so what is a 10K? Well, I'm going to read you the definition uh, from Investopedia, and then I'm going to explain it to you. So basically, the definition is the following. It's a comprehensive report filled annually. And this is when you do it when you are a public company. And um, basically what it is, is a requirement from the SEC, which is the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, where the SEC tells a company, like, look, you need to put a report where the uh, shareholders, investors, everything, this has to be public, is going to be in this document. So the document and the definition, again, says the report contains much more detail than a company's annual report which is sent to its shareholders before an annual meeting to elect company directors. So it's extremely important. Um, how do you find the 10K? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and just share the screen right now. And let's see, share the screen. I think it's this one, this is the one. See, voila, did it come up? Let me erase this. Erase, <laughs> delete this. Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see it here. So, the 10K for Tesla, you can basically either go to the SEC or you can just go to the company. And then from there, when you go all the way down, there's a section that should, you know, say investor. So you could just Google 10K Tesla. And then you can see here that there are different ones, right? Um, because Tesla is a public company, they, they are required to do this 10K. So today, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's see what is a 10K. Why do they put in a 10K? And let's just basically do a like, like a quick analysis of Tesla's 10K. Now notice that here, this is like a hundred and something pages, but you have here the index, right? So it, uh, the part one, and every single public company has to follow this order. So what is the business, risk factors, unresolved staff comments, properties, legal proceedings, mine safety disclosure. So this is part one. Then part two of the 10K, and I'm just reading the index for whoever is listening to this, is basically going to be more into the financial area. So it says market for registrants, common equities, related stockholders matters, selected consolid uh, consolidated financial data. We're gonna get there in just one second. Management discussion of financial conditions and results of operations and blah, 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 blah. So part two has financial statements, Basically, everything that has to do with the accounting and financial area, to put it that way. Part three, then they're going to talk about, okay, who are the stakeholders of Tesla of this 10K? And here you have here directors, executive officers, and corporate governance. Then they have executive competition, uh, compensation, certain relationships, principal account fees and services. So you can see here the part three, and then they have part um, four, which is the last one, is just basically the exhibits and financial statements schedules. So this is basically what a 10K has, is uh, four parts. One, it has to do basically with what is the business risk factor. Part number two is more of the financial part. Part number three is like, hey, who is running <laughs> and how are we running this place? And then uh, part four, basically, it's like you want more information, you go here to the exhibit and, you know, then you have like kind of like a summary. So what I want to do, I want to go ahead and click um, in, let's actually go back. Okay. And you can see this has a lot of pages and the best way that I can do this is just to start from, okay. So first, let's just, start, let's just take a quick look of when they say business. Um, Look at this. Basically, this is like a, like a review of the products that the company, in this case Tesla, is going to give you, our, our products and services. So here, Model 3, Model Y, Model S, and Model X, uh, future consumers and commer commercial electric vehicles. So here, it's kind of like presenting, listen, this is what we do. And then look, they have technology, self-driving development. So this is the area where the investor can say like, oh, okay, um, I see, this is what they do. This is how they make money. They talk about basically everything about the services. Notice here they have service and warranty. They talk about the automobile. And a lot of these definitions are important because look at this. They have insurance, how they talk about insurance, financial services. So it's very important 
to read this to understand basically the inside of the company, as you can see here. Uh, notice that the, because this is Tesla, we'll keep going down, they talk about the manufacturing areas. And if you go on and on here, we're in part number one, you're just gonna basically see like they have competition, who's the competition uh, for Tesla, intellectual property, human capital resources. This is all what we have on part one. Now the risk factors. Here they're talking about COVID because obviously with COVID, they, they have to tell this to investors like, look, this is what happened last year, how we got affected. And then obviously propose a solution so the investors can say like, you got our money <laughs> secure and you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is maximize the shareholder profit, right? And then from here it says, risk related to our ability to grow our businesses. Now this is risk factors uh, from part one. They talk about how COVID here, uh, the, how they were impacted with COVID. They talk about basically how, um, when you start reading it, I mean, like I said, this is a lot, when they start, when you start reading it, reading it you, as an investor, you can understand. You say, okay, well, so who was, for example, here they're showing our supplies might fail to deliver components according to schedules, prices, quality, and volume. So, all of this, these are unexpected changes to put it that way because the pandemic, no one knew that this was going to happen. So obviously, especially I guess with technology, that it just goes so fast, and when you're building a car parts i guess like the logistic must be extremely complex especially like this type of a specific like you know electric car so it's very interesting to understand this and read this because you're basically seeing how one of the most incredible companies is dealing with the pandemic so i feel that this is a good way to understand what they're doing and trying to see like well is this going to help the value of the company and the valuation of the stock if they're able to if they are run, right now understanding what the pandemic is will they be able to then with those resources actually like you know get ahead and basically will my stock because that's your concern right is it gonna um go up when from there let's go ahead and go to the index again you can see that you can have uh, a lot of fun <laughs> reading this is a lot but I feel this is very important because everyone is all the time talking about stocks the stock the stocks and these are super important things to understand especially when you're talking about Amazon Microsoft Walmart these companies that that they have so much data that you can actually make a little bit of a a better decision if you yourself understand it and all that but when you're doing a financial analysis, when you're taking, let's say, a class and you're doing financial analysis, you can see that this takes time and there's much more to also see other than the 10K. But I think like the 10K is like the financial heart of the company. And then very important for the investors. So let's go back to part two and let's go ahead and check the selected consolidated financial data. Look how beautiful it is. <laughs> Usually you're gonna have um, five years. So here you have 2016 all the way to 2020. And what's going to happen here is that you're going to have what is called the consolidated statements. And here you're gonna have like consolidated balance sheet. And what it is, is just basically telling you, hey, this is like the most important parts where you can go ahead and do your financial ratio. So notice that here, you're going to have total revenue, profit. So you're going to have here like some, um, some information about the income statement, some information about the balance sheet. But what you also want to all go over is when you go here on the bottom, look how much information it is in this area here on the consolidated. Let me go ahead and show you. Let me go back and if you go to the appendix like they basically have everything this is just basically like a little piece of the financial statements here but let me just go ahead and go here okay i love this area right here so you have the the financial statements and all that and then they tell you hey what is the quantitative and qualitative disclosure about the market risk and here they explain you 
what are the things that are affecting tests? Like, like for example, foreign seed currency risk, interest uh, risk risk, and then here, they just basically give you all the information if you want to um, go over and, for example, see like the complete uh, balance sheet or the consolidated. You can see here, now here you have assets, operating lease, liabilities. Look how beautiful this is. Look at the in increase on cash, for example, that they had, like 6,000 to 68 to 19. Obviously, this is in millions. And here you can, uh, you can do um, an evaluation of understand, obviously when you also increase cash, you're also, uh, in, you're also gonna increase your liability. So, you know, remember because assets is equal to liabilities plus equity, and you always have to also take that in consideration. So the balance sheet is extremely important because it gives you the overall of the whole company. There are other statements, obviously, look, here we have the consolidated statements of operations. Look at the revenues. You can see here from 2018 to 2020, they went from almost 17 million, I'm just putting here in millions, 17,632 to 26,184 on automotive, on automo, automotive, yes, automotive, automobiles, I guess, so automo, automotive sales. And then look at the leasing one. Now from here, it's also important that when you get more capital, you also get more debt, you're also paying more interest expense and that's the reason why you also see an increase here on interest expense. So you can see that every single movement that the company does, and when you see the statement in general, you kind of see like, but wait, why is their liability so much more? And that's when you go to the notes and then you see on the part of liability and then they explain you, we have more liabilities because we had to increase our operation. And because of that, they had to, they went ahead and they, they got more equipment. I'm just making an example, but they have to financing, blah, 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 blah. So this is how wonderful this um, 10K is. I get excited. It's a lot of information and you can get like a little bit too much. But I feel like if you're someone that is really want, wants to like really, really enjoys Tesla, this is the heart of the company. Or you may, maybe if you're trying to get a job at Tesla, you're like, I know you're 10 cake. And Elon Musk is like, you're hired. <laughs> I can't imagine being in an interview with Elon Musk. I don't know. Anyhow. Coming, uh, also look at this, they have the consolidated statements of cash flows. And remember that the cash flows, what it is, they just want to know where the cash is coming from, operating activities, investing activities, or financing activities. So what does this mean? The cash flow is very important because let's say that you, I'm gonna tell you from my example from a hate math group when I had a hate math group. When I had a hate math group, a hate math group, I had a cash flow from operating activities and this was basically from what the tutors will make, what I will make as a tutor, and that was operating activities because it was something that was going on all the time, operating activities, that's what they call it like that. Then the one from investing activities will be, for example, if I have something like, like a cash coming in or the, uh, for an investment, let's say that I own the building and a little piece of the building for HEMAT, which I didn't own the building, but I just put an example, Let's say that I own the building and then I had a HEMAT here and then next door to me, I will rent that. Then that actually will be a cash flow from an investing activity. Then from there, you have the uh, cash flows from financing activities. And this is basically if I will go ahead and just say like, okay, I'm gonna sell stock from a HEMAT group, then I just sell it, right? So this is a different, this is basically what a statement of cash flow reflects. Where is this cash coming from? Because if I go to the IRS and I tell them, look here, a million dollars, uh, you know, on capital gain and just, of, of my cash flow, they will be like, well, you should really subdivide it because depending on where the cash flow is coming from, you might be able to deduct taxes. I'm not a CPA, but this is the reason why it's so important to have basically operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. And you learn this in accounting and finance. So yes. It's fun. <laughs> no, this, those classes are a little are tedious. But once you get it, then you understand how important it is. Um, besides that, uh, as you can see here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the link, they have graphs. They talk about basically the stock performance graph. Here we can see here 
comparison of 60 months cumulative total return. And they show basically, um, you know, how it just went up, uh, the return. I haven't read this part right here, but you can see it, you know, Tesla was basically uh, had a much higher return that compared to motor vehicles and passengers, Calvary's public company group or a NASDAQ composite. So basically they are just here bragging a little bit. I love it. <laughs> of um, how important it is to have a free market and people trying to do this so that way we can have a, a much better world to put it away. So love Elon Musk. I don't know sometimes if I say Elon Musk or Elon Musk or Elon or Elon. I don't know, because I hear sometimes the interviews in Spanish and English. I hope you enjoy. Let me go ahead and um, just stop uh, sharing. So here we just went through uh, just like a quick review about the 10K for Tesla. I hope you enjoy this mini podcast. If you have any suggestions or any questions, please put it into the comments. Hopefully it's positive. And if it's negative, just always be objective and a little bit of subjective in the nice size and for sure I will answer. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And this was Vanessa Growlish for um, this nice podcast that I, I hope you guys are enjoying. Have a good day.